Shorties, man. Shorties. Shorties gonna love this one. Yup. Welcome Moto Suit fans and car enthusiasts all around the world. And right here is a 2015 Jeep Wrangler. As we jump into every nook and cranny of this car, hard hitting is the interior. As you can see, it's rough and rugged and it's got a very tough look to it. Jeez. Okay. Over to the front of the car, we've got this 7 slot grille, which is not only a design element, it's a statement of adventure. In addition to that, you've got the Jeep badge, you've got the beautiful Xenon headlamps, which illuminate the road beautifully. You also have this very tough plastic bumper, which to me looks like a big lower lip, but it works for the vehicle. And it's not just for looks, the Jeep Wrangler is built to take a beating off-road. It's got a solid body-on-frame chassis that allows it to be steady and stern and rigid on any terrain. Putting rubber to road, it's got these very thick tires that wrap around these 17 inch alloys. You can see the side skirts that are there to support weight and it's got a very big generous ground clearance. And the back, of course you've got your spare tire placed there and you've got a brake light on top of it because there was nowhere else to put it. As you can see, there is no rear window so putting this anywhere here wouldn't have made sense. I think that was smart from the designers at Jeep. You've got these beautiful tail lights. They're very calm and subtle, not too much going about them. It's more about functionality since this car is built for adventure. You also have the plastic fenders and this runs all around the car from the side skirts that are plastic, the bumpers and the fenders too. And it just adds for more of that rugged approach because if stones and rocks and all these materials hit the car, it's better that they go in plastic than if they mess up your metal. Now we take the top off and let some light in. Now let's dive into the interior of this beautiful beast. First things first, okay this leather is hot because of the open roof that's allowing all the sunshine to just come into the cabin. But we've got this beautiful or simple 6.5 inch touch screen that provides you with infotainment and everything that you need for your trips. It's a U-Connect system that's built by Chrysler. But over here we have a modified Pioneer. And it's tuned to these Alpine speakers that are a mix of Alpine and Pioneer because these are specifically modified for this car. And it turns out about 550 horsepower. Aye. Now 550 watts is a lot of power. So we're expecting the sound of this car to be crisp, loud and clear. I could use a bit of tuning, but it's not so bad. At least it's got the idea. You've got your climate controls right here for your AC and air circulation. You've got your window dials here, which is interesting. There are no window controls on the doors. They're all in the center console right here. You've got your knobs for temperature and your off-road dials, your hazards, and everything else, including your lighting options here for the driver. You've got two cup holders here in the center. One is bigger than the other. You've also got dual storage here, padded maybe for a small item like a phone or something, but you've got a deeper cabinet in here for maybe storing bottles or any large, large items you may have. The seats are leather, quite comfortable because they're a little bit hugging. And I like that they've got proper lumbar support so your back is well placed when you're sat. You've got a nice and free-flowing steering wheel here with the driver control such as voice activation. You can check your menu through the infotainment up and down as well as your cruise control which is an interesting feature for the steering wheel. Let's check out the rear seating. Ooh! Ah! The rear seating is a little bit tight to get into. Ah! Uh. And I can tell you why. You see, on most cars, the back door normally slopes to allow more space for your derriere. But this, this knob right here, 
can hurt you if you don't enter the car carefully. You've got enough space for your legs. Um, it's not the most, but it's comfortable. And because the seating is a little bit angled to a 90 degree angle, your back is straight and you can sit comfortably. There's enough headroom, especially if you take the top off, so you can go on long journeys and just have fun. But the leather seats are comfortable, very soft and cushioned. And there is no center console, but it's quite all right. It's an adventure car. You have two cup holders, no climate control in the back, uh, but who needs it anyway? You've got all the air in the world. You've got door bins over there that are made of cloth or net and storage right here behind both seats. Now, in case you need more space or you're carrying sporting gear, camping gear, any type of gear, you've got these foldable seats that drop right off and can give you even more space to store whatever it is you got back there. So let's take this bad beast onto the road to get a nice feel of how it moves. Come along. So off we go with the Jeep. Let's just go see what it's about. Off the bat, the car is a little bit bigger than it looks when you're driving. Therefore, it's a lot to handle. It's a 3.6 litre V6 that can give you averagely 8 kilometers per litre. I'm going to strap my safety belt on because, you know, safety first. And also that noise is annoying. It's definitely got a bit of kick to it. You can feel the engine roaring just when you accelerate. As much as it's a great off-road car, it's really nice for cruising on road. You sit obviously higher than most cars would, but the feel of the top down with the wind blowing through your hair from all angles it gives you a, an SUV slash convertible feel. It's magnificent. I would buy this car just for that reason alone. Because this beats a panoramic sunroof. Shorties, man. Shorties. Shorties gonna love this one. Yep. Yep. Now, of course, the Wrangler has very capable suspension and it can handle off-road immaculately. But we just want to see how good or to what extent it can actually be an off-roader bouncy so I guess it's handling the roads quite well and this is exactly what this kind of car was made to do you know what I mean but all in all man on road and off road to be honest when we started this review I wasn't a big fan of the Wrangler but I can see myself in it I can see what what and what which and what situations would be relevant for a car like this would I buy it I wouldn't say I'd wake up with it on my mind but it's definitely something to keep a collector's item you know one of these things you say I have I own I drive so yeah check it out at Motorsuit hit us up and we can get you one of these units